All right, welcome everyone. Today, we're gonna to be talking about another special type of series, which we call a P-series. All right, so specifically in today's lesson, we're gonna see the definition, see actually what a P-series is, and we'll actually see how to determine when such a series is convergent and when it's divergent. So that's gonna be helpful. So last time we looked at geometric series, today we're looking at P-series, and really these are our two fundamental kind of building block series that we're gonna be coming back to over and over again. All right, so let's get into it. What's the definition? Well, here we go. A P-series is really just a special type of series where we're essentially trying to add up the terms in a sequence uh, formed from a power function. So kind of think of the P as, as like a power function. Really, that's what we have here. And here's kind of the, the formal definition written out. So a P-series is a series of the form uh, sigma from n equals 1 to infinity. So it's, it's a series, in sigma notation here, of 1 over n to the power P, where P is a constant. So it's helpful to keep that in mind. P is just a constant here. It's just the power function, really, you can kind of think of it. And what is it if we write out the terms? Well, the first term is 1 over 1 to the power P, plus 1 over 2 to the power P, plus 1 over 3 to the power P, and so on. And then we get up to 1 over N raised to the power P, and it keeps going. So a series is essentially we're trying to add up these terms. And as we're going to see, depending on the power P, Sometimes we can do it, so sometimes we actually get a sum. The series is convergent, sometimes we don't. Sometimes we can't, and the series is divergent. And here we go. We have our result here, and this is the main result we're going to kind of refer back to. A P-series, the convergence of a P-series really depends on that value for P. And it's convergent when P is greater than 1, and it's divergent when p is less than or equal to 1. And, you know, we make a little note here. The starting index value, we can relax this a bit. So this result is going to be true if we were to start at other starting index values. So n equals 2 or n equals 3 or n equals 100. If our, ser if our starting index value is, you know, we can relax it a little bit. So it doesn't have to be exactly 1. It could be, could be a bit something else. And the result is still going to be true. So it really comes down to what this power P is. Again, convergent when P is greater than 1, divergent when P is less than or equal to 1. Now, we have this nice convergence result. But unfortunately, the sum is not something that we're regularly going to be working with because there is, in general, no nice, simple formula that gives us the sum of a P-series. You know, there are some special cases where we actually do know the sum. Like we have here, this is the P-series with P equals 2. And it turns out we actually do know the sum of this, 1 over n squared. So the power there is 2, so it's a p-series with p equals 2. The sum of 1 over n squared from n equals 1 to infinity is actually pi squared over 6. But in general, we don't have a nice formula that relates the, the value of p to actually what the, the sum of the, the p-series is when it's convergent. So for the most part, we're actually not really going to be discussing this, the sum exactly. We're just going to be stating whether the P-series is convergent or divergent. So just to keep in mind, yeah, sometimes we do know the sum of a P-series, but in general, this is not the case. We don't have a nice formula for it. All right, so let's just kind of compare our two major kind of fundamental series. We have our P-series which is of this form, sigma 1 over n to the power p. And we have our geometric series, sigma a times r to the power n. So let's just first just look at what are the, the some of the kind of the fundamental differences here. Well, when we look at in a p-series, the number n 
kind of our index values, they're the base term. So n is being raised to the power p, whereas our exponent is a constant. Our exponent is a constant p. Now if we contrast that with what we're seeing in the geometric series case, here a times r to the n, n is actually in the exponent. It's not in the base. And the base term is a constant. So in the geometric series case, we have a constant that's being raised to the power n. In the p-series case, we have n being raised to a constant. So it's a, it's a bit of a fundamental difference here. Really, these are like power functions, or it, they're related to power functions. Geometric series are related to exponential functions. So really think power function here. And think kind of the underlying structure here. And this is really not a geometric, exponential function. So you can kind of think of them as like x to the power p versus b to the power x. It's kind of the, the fundamental difference here between a p-series and a geometric series. Um, but what about convergence? So let's just summarize the, the convergence results as well. So for a p-series, it's convergent when p is greater than 1 and divergent when p is less than or equal to 1. Now, for a geometric series, it almost feels like the opposite in some way. So a geometric series has to do, the convergence has to do with that r value. And we saw it was convergent when the absolute value of r was less than 1. And it was divergent when the absolute value of r was greater than or equal to 1. So it almost feels like they're opposites. So it helps to just have these written out side by side so we can quickly distinguish between the convergence of a p-series and the convergence of a geometric series. So a p-series is convergent when p is greater than 1. Uh, and a geometric series is convergent when the absolute value of r is less than 1. So kind of a, a, a fundamental difference here. All right, what about sum? For a p-series, for the most part, we don't really work with the sum. It's, it's, there's not a nice formula, and not, there's not a nice general result. So kind of just leave that as question mark. But for a, a geometric series, we actually do with, work with the sum there. So when this makes sense, the sum is actually a divided by 1 minus r. So we don't have a similar nice result for a p-series, unfortunately. All right. So it's always helpful to relate this back to things we've seen before. And if we remember back to when we talked about improper integrals, this might kind of sound familiar. So. We're going to come back to this idea. But we looked at these special type of improper integrals, which we called p-form improper integrals. And what did our previous results say? It said the improper integral from 1 to infinity of the function 1 over x to the power p. We said this improper integral was convergent when p was greater than 1 and divergent when p was less than or equal to 1. And if we compare that, we have this result about a p-series, which feels very similar. It says our p-series is convergent when p is greater than 1 and divergent when p is less than or equal to 1. And this is not really coincidence. So there's actually a result, which we're going to look at pretty soon, that relates an improper integral to a series. And we call it the integral test. And it's this integral test that really relates improper integrals
and series. So all that work we spent developing improper integrals, we're going to come back to it because um, specifically for a P series, we can we can use improper integrals to actually help us prove this convergence result. But it works for other types of series as well, not just a P series. So as we're going to see, there's there's a uh, a series test, which we call the integral test, that really relates this idea of improper integrals to what we're seeing, what we're going to see with series. And we're going to see that in a few lessons. But it's just helpful to, to kind of compare these two results here. We've seen this sort of thing before. All right, so how do we, how in practice, how do we actually work with a P series? So let's try example one. Example one, we're going to determine if this series is convergent or divergent. And looking at this, it really comes down to just identifying that this is a p-series and stating what the p-series, what the p-value is. So if we look at this, we see it's the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared. And it's n that's being raised to a constant power here. So it's that constant power, that 2, that's our p-value. So this is a p-series. with p equal to 2. And that's really enough. If we go back to our convergence result, we can say since p is greater than 1, this series is convergent. So we're just stating that's really it. I mean, <laughs> that's that's how we're going to do it. All this nice empty white space here. So it's I, we're identifying that it's a P-series. So that's a kind of a key observation here. It's 1 over n raised to a constant power. We're identifying what that power is. In this case, P is equal to 2. And since that P-value is greater than 1, we automatically know that this P series is convergent. That's it. <clears throat> so it's nice. Now we actually do know the sum for this series. So we saw that it was what was it? Pi squared over six. We're not going to be too worried. We're not going to be worried too much about sum for P series. Let's try another one. Let's look at this one. Uh, sum from n equals one to infinity of one over square root n. We're going to determine if this is convergent or divergent. And maybe the only bit of work here that we need to do is just rewrite that root function or that root sign as a power function. So let's just rewrite this. Kind of one of our standard little techniques here is just we rewrite it as a power. And it's that power that's our p value. So we notice that this fits in with our p-series format. It's 1 over n, which is raised to a constant power. So we just identify this is a p-series. So we do need to state that it is a p-series. What is the p-value? p is equal to 1 half in this case. That's the power on our n. And in this case, since p is less than or equal to 1, it means our series is divergent. And that's it. So when we're presented with a, a p-series, we just need to state that it is a p-series. We need to state the p-value and then just state the result. Is it convergent or divergent? And that's really it. So nice, it's really not too bad. Just have to remember the result. But we've seen this kind of thing before when we talked about p form and proper integrals. All right, let's try one more. Here we go, we have the, the sum from n equals five to infinity of one over n 
And now the only thing that might be a little different here is there's just the observation here that our starting index value is five, and that's okay. That result still applies for different starting index values. So even though our starting index value is five, the result still applies. All right, so what, what is this? This is a P series. Technically, it's like the, the what we might call like the tail of a P series. So it doesn't include, we're kind of cutting off the first few terms, but really the convergence of a series has to do with what happens towards the end. So if we kind of miss a first the first few terms, that's okay. That doesn't affect the convergence or divergence. It's what, hap what, ha it's what happens um, for the, the remainder of the terms. So this is a P series. Technically, it's like the, the tail of a P-series, but it's a P-series with P equal to... All right, so what is P? Well, it's the power, the constant power on our N, and we don't see anything, but there's always something. So there's always a hidden one. So if you don't see a power, there's always it's always there. It might just not be written explicitly. So there's always a hidden one. So our p-value in this case is 1. So what that means, we have a p-series with p equal to 1. Since our p-value is less than or equal to 1 in this case, what's happening? Well, our series is divergent. So again, we want to state that it's a p-series, we want to state the actual p-value, and then we actually want to state the result. In this case, p is less than or equal to 1, which means the series is divergent. And again, our starting index value is 5, so we're not starting right at n equals 1. So we're actually looking at what we call like the, the tail of a, of a series. So it's where we cut off the first few terms and then we look at the remainder. And that's really what we're dealing with here is we have we don't have the, the fir, uh, n equals one term, n equals two, three, or four. We're starting at n equals five, but really the, the convergence really happens with that, the, the tail, the, the end part of our series from n equals five to infinity. So, you know, there's no way the n equals 1 or n equals 2 or n equals 3 or n equals 4 is going to affect the convergence. Really, the convergence happens when we kind of try to add up all of the, the rest of the terms, and that's going to affect the convergence. And what we see here is that we actually can't do it. We get a divergent series. All right, so you know that's really it for, for p-series. We have this nice result that really lets us quickly identify whether the series is convergent or divergent. And this 1 over n, we should kind of go back and mention this, this series sigma 1 over n, we actually do sometimes give it a special name. So let's go back to our kind of our first page right here. There's a special case. So sometimes we might use that the, the terminology where p is equal to 1. in which case it's just 1 over n. Sometimes we call this a harmonic series. So it's just a special case. Um, it shows up enough where we actually sometimes have a kind of a special name. So for when p is equal to 1, we sometimes call that series a harmonic series. All right. So that's going to do it for today's lesson. Um, so it really comes down to just knowing our convergence results that a P-series, 
something of the form 1 over n to the power p is convergent when p is greater than 1 and when p is less than or equal to 1. And with that, we can quickly identify whether the series is, is convergent or divergent. All right. So next time, we're going to get into, we're going to start talking about how do we test a general series to see if it's convergent or divergent. So we're going to be developing a kind of a whole bunch of different tests that allow us to determine whether just a, a general series, if it's convergent or divergent. So we're going to start talking about that next time. So we'll see you then. Bye-bye.